Welcome to the Word Exposed. Together, let us receive the Lord who embraces us through the unfolding of the sacred scripture. Stay with us and feel the outpouring of His steadfast love. A pleasant day to you, my dear friends. Today, the readings deal with the resurrection. Do you believe in the resurrection of the dead and everlasting life? This is the faith that the martyrs attested to in the first reading. Though their lives were threatened, they confessed boldly, the King of the world will raise us up to live again forever. And our Lord Jesus affirms in the gospel, our God is of the living, for to Him all are alive. On this 32nd Sunday in Ordinary Time, this is a good point to relish. According to Jesus, the Holy Spirit will not invent new truth. The Holy Spirit will lead us to the truth that Jesus has already taught. When you have the Holy Spirit, you can speak and explore different languages to address people of different needs. Barriers and boundaries of discrimination, division, and injustice should disappear. The diversity of the gifts should not be a hindrance to the strengthening of the church. God chooses all. A reading from the second book of Maccabees. It happened that seven brothers with their mother were arrested and tortured with whips and scourges by the king to force them to eat pork in violation of God's law. One of the brothers, speaking for the others, said, What do you expect to achieve by questioning us? We are ready to die rather than transgress the laws of our ancestors. At the point of death, he said, You accursed fiend, you are depriving us of this present life, but the king of the world will raise us up to live again forever. It is for his laws that we are dying. After him, the third suffered their cruel sport. He put out his tongue at once when told to do so and bravely held out his hands as he spoke these noble words. It was for heaven that I received these. For the sake of his laws, I disdain them. From him, I hope to receive them again. Even the king and his attendants marveled at the young man's courage because he regarded his sufferings as nothing. After he had died, they tortured and maltreated the fourth brother in the same way. When he was near death, he said, It is my choice to die at the hands of men with the hope God gives of being raised up by him. But for you, there will be no resurrection to life. The Word of the Lord. Our first reading for this Sunday is taken from the second book of Maccabees. We would like to reflect on the beauty of the teaching of the church regarding life after death. Many people will probably find this quite irrelevant nowadays. They will say, well, we have to focus on this life. And that is true. But what happens to our involvement in this life if there is no vision of life after death? In the first reading, we find this episode in the life of Israel, which was quite uh, dark because of the persecution of the Israelites. It was a religious persecution. The Israelites were being asked against their will and against the commandment of the Lord to eat forbidden food, most especially pork, which, according to uh, the Jewish tradition, rendered people uh, ritually impure because they considered pigs as impure animals. So if you eat of, this, uh, of the flesh of these uh, animals, then you also become impure. 
And so you need to be cleansed before you could join worship and offer sacrifice to the Lord. Now this is being forced on the Israelites. One element of a general persecution. In the passage today, we hear of the account of the persecution and the martyrdom of seven brothers, four of them, who would rather die rather than violate the commandments of the Lord. Many of us would probably say, wow, it's just about rules. It's just about uh, some sort of a dietary uh, restriction. Why will they not taste it and then save their lives? Why not be practical? Well, for them, this is not just about eating something or not eating something. This is about their fidelity to God. It is not so much a rule. It is more about a relationship with God. And keeping the rule means that they recognize God and they would go, go through anything. They will bear anything just to keep the relationship with God, just to maintain the relationship with God. What sustained these brothers in the face of persecution? There must be something, for every persecution is uh, uh, quite painful. Who will not, who will not tremble before the weapons of death before you. Especially if you see one person dying and you're the next to be persecuted. In the account of the four martyrs, the four brothers who were martyred, what sustained them? That's this, the hope in life after death. They believed that God created them. Life is a gift of God, for God is life. And if life comes from God, God can restore life after death. This is the belief of these brothers. And this belief made them courageous. They will not deny God who gave them life and they could face the physical persecution in this world in the hope that in the afterlife, God, who is life, will give life again. So people who say, oh, the belief in the life after death is useless, they better read this text. And they will see how this faith could give courage could give hope, could give people who believe in life after death as a gift of God who is life, as a continuing process of creation as it were, from creation in this world to a recreation in eternal life, you will see that this faith could make a person a mountain, a mountain of strength, that even kings, emperors, and soldiers would marvel at the courage of one of these sons of this valiant woman. They, they, they were the ones who trembled. Why is this person courageous in the face of death? What makes a person face and bear difficulties in this life? The promise of a life after death coming from the God who is life.